since about three or four weeks ago when we went to China. So reading these little books, they're very simple, but they're very neat because they have all little types of gadgets and gizmos to kind of enter entertain the kids. But the stories are very, very limited and stuff. But realize for two, three, four-year-olds. So this house for hermit crab feels like it has substance to it. And this crab, I imagine, starts off as a young, little, whatever, crablet. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> maybe a uh, hermit crab. So as it grows up, it probably sees the older adults, its mom and dad, having these wonderful, beautiful houses and shells around them, and saying, someday I too will have one of these. But as the hermit crab goes around and grows, it tries this one. Oh, no, it's too small. Can't go relax. Oh, it's too big. So at the end, there's probably some fishy that's trying to come and eat it, and the hermit crab scampers away and dives into the shell and ducks in and stays safe from the fish and says, ah, this is perfect. So I'm sure that this is what this book is all about. And in probably in a few years I'll see I'm totally wrong, but we'll see. <laughs> but I thank you all for all your preparation and we are. Thank you very much. So. Is, is the uh, author that he's one of the uh, biggest selling authors for children under the age of five because he's noted for his illustrations. Okay. So you can read that already to Caitlin. Ooh, his illustrations fishies. are very unique because he uses cut out paper, colored paper, to make his illustrations. Oh, wow. So you'll see a lot of his stuff in the children's section. I'm starting to realize, and the pink Barbie aisle. Sure oh no, stay out of the pink Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> I raised my daughter without Barbies. It was the best thing I ever did. Okay, All right. Art. Yes. Could you please open your gift for Paul and tell us what it's about? A subject that I know very well. <laughs> you buy that? <laughs> It doesn't count this time. No. <laughs> it doesn't? Oh. <laughs> There's a method. That would be illiterate. Oh, Ooh, tales of wisdom and wonder. I would not be illiterate with this book, I can assure you. This is a wonderful, this is the preview to Harry Potter. Once you've understood Harry, <laughs> You've understood life, but prior to Harry, before Harry walked down these paths, there was the wonder and wisdom, or better yet, the tales of wisdom and wonder, but you can flip it either way you'd like. And I can assure you that this has been retold by Hugh Lupton, while illustrated by Niam Sharkey, and done an excellent job. You will be thrilled, infatuated, entranced, and thoroughly enjoy this novel. Paul, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> Did you write an editorial for this book? I certainly would write an editorial for this book. I would strongly endorse it, encourage you to read it. In fact, I'd encourage you to read it at least three or four times before you share it with your child. Thank you. by Hans Christian Andersen, you may recognize the name, and it's called The Nightingale. Probably a profound piece of children's literature that I'm not familiar with, though I am familiar somewhat with Hans Christian Andersen. It hasn't been in my 
on my radar in recent years. He is a classic. I couldn't tell you why he's a classic. It looks like a fabulous book. The Nightingale. There are, there are basic themes that all humans connect with. Home, safety, family, love. So the Nightingale, I suspect, may represent beauty, uh, wildness. Nightingales sing very well, I believe. Be song and beauty. From the illustration, it looks very colorful. It's kind of like an Asian theme. Possibly uh, befitting of your situation. So the nightingale sitting in this tree has some message for the people below. And I bet that message will resonate with Caitlin. And I hope you are able to convey that to her. It looks like a very beautiful book. It has a retelling and an illustration credit. So it, it seems as if it's been updated to more contemporary times. I think Hans Christian goes back a couple hundred years. Bagram, I can't even pronounce the name. Looks like an accomplished illustrator. So I hope this book serves Caitlin and you and your wife very well. Michelle, could you please count Oz for Brian's speech? Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sneaky way of calling us. No, I'd rather show than that. Uh, we'll, we'll do something else with that. Um, could, could you? Tell us what your favorite childhood 